Well, the very first thing I always think about is, is it going to improve student learning? So I'm willing to try these technologies if I see that improves student learning of content because, you know, in this case of biology. Um, and we had to do like an individually based research project and then try to provide it. So any viewer that came across the site could be like, oh, hey, they looked at this endocrine disruptor and it does this and it's, you know, from these man-made chemicals. So just like a basic overview, but then also provide them with tools. So if they wanted to find out more, they could look at journal articles or they could go to other websites and they could find more information. But you want them to come to it and be like, wow, like draw them with pictures and text and quotes that would really draw somebody in. Some people use Photosynth so that we could compile even like hundreds of photos into this thing you can navigate through and it makes like a dissection all three-dimensional so you can zoom around in a frog gut if you wanted to. <laughs> and um, then we like learned how to embed Google Docs into Google Sites so that someone can come across and you can make PowerPoint slides and then all they have to do is hit play. Well, I think the caliber of the work has definitely been elevated because all of a sudden everyone's able to see what you're working on. And then you can check out what other students are doing and you kind of realize, well, hmm, I guess I should be doing that too. Or uh, So I've really seen this elevation because I'm able to view it at any point. It's not like this final product, for example, that I'm just seeing um, that you can hand in and no one else gets to see it. So I think there is this, um, when you're sharing your work on an ongoing basis, you know, you're taking, being a little more careful, and that's what I've seen. Well, I think, especially for undergrads, when they know it's not gonna be just a professor viewing it, I think people generally put in more effort because they're like, okay, and like all my classmates are going to see this, and then after the semester we know it's going to go live. And it's also awesome because you can provide those links to grad schools or future employers and be like, hey, I'm really interested in what you do, like check out this research project I did. You don't want to send a link if like you didn't really try that hard on the project. So I think you're like, well this could really benefit me later if I'm applying to grad school and I meet this, if I'm emailing this primary investigator of this lab, they're like, hey, look, I'm interested in what you do, like, see what I think about it. What I saw was their willingness to try something they had no familiarity with and really create um, products that demonstrated their understanding of the content with, and teaching each other. Um, so the group's working together and they're teaching each other about um, something rather than me doing all the teaching. And I think that's one of the great ways you learn is um, through teaching others. So I'm using it as an educational tool that um, where they're demonstrating their understanding by teaching others something that they wouldn't get otherwise. The groups aren't competitive, they're sort of helping each other. So once one student figures out how to do, create a photosynth, that they're more than willing to share it with all the other students and not everything has to come back to me. You know, I'm not the, the hub of everything. Like, there's all this learning that's happening without my, um, you know, immediate facilitation. And that's really cool to see. And then I just feel like the whole class is more cohesive as a result. They sort of champion each other. and So then when they stand up and give their final presentations, they know each other better. They um, know each other's work better. They haven't just been working in isolated groups the groups have been sharing. Listen, well, Dr. Wittemore obviously told us that she's going to use the same course site and all of our stuff will be there still and then next year students or two year students will, you know, be able to see what we did and then kind of work from there. And we are the first, um, we are the first site for the comparative animal physiology course. So now every like semester of students that comes in is going to be like, all right, so what did everyone else do? Like, what's the quality of work that she's looking for? Because we, we didn't really know. We kind of like, almost set the bar for future classes. Which is it is really a form of service learning, if you think about it. You're in service of the public and, and educating the public, so I think that always appeals to students that their product isn't just going to be a hard copy of a paper that the professor takes home and marks all up and then it comes back to them and then what happens to all that work, you know? So all this work gets used in some way or could be useful. and. Um, 
I think then you take more pride in that and you work a little harder to, because it may benefit people in some way. So that's, you know, that really appeals to students' um, service, uh, their, their sense of service and wanting to serve others. And people are like, oh, you know, website design, that's not something I'll ever do. But it's like going to be something everyone needs to know how to do. It doesn't really matter what discipline you're in. You're going to need to know how to like put your thoughts out there. Whether you want to blog and kind of trash on politics or you want to, you know, post blogs and share data and like do something intelligent on the internet. It's really important how to use these tools and starting it as an undergrad. You're going to go off as a grad student or go off, at, you know, as an employee somewhere and you're going to know how to use these tools and a lot of people don't. I don't think a lot of people have this experience. I think we're lucky here. Again, it's all about improving student learning, and both of skills, but also of contents. And I think both, you know, I think it's all trying these technologies. There's hardly any that I would discard, you know. But I'm, I'm, you know, I'm very skeptical. I started off being very skeptical, but willing to try, and I'm like very convinced that it's improved student learning. Not for probably another 10 years. <laughs> I knew I'd have to do that, you know, if I actually get a PhD and have a lab. I'd obviously have a lab site and, you know, put info and journal articles and all kinds of stuff up there, but I didn't think that I would have like a... I knew I'd make a portfolio, but I was thinking of it in like a three-ring binder that I could bring to an interview, but this is much easier because when I send somebody a cover letter and a CV and be like, hey, I saw this job posting, whatever, in my signature of the email it says web. And then there's the link to my Google site, and so if they see that, and I usually mention the email, like, you know, you can find below a link to my career portfolio, um, you know, if you're interested in more information about me or something. And um, I've gotten a lot of emails back being like, wow, you know, this is really great. It was really easy. Like, in such a short amount of time, I learned so much about you and your experience.